Hey everyone, this is Kieran from Eccentric Physio. Uh, today's exercise is a bit more of a stretch. Um, it's going to help us build a little bit of thoracic uh, rotation. Um, it's not necessarily, uh, I guess, a, a range that you'd get into usually when you're on the ground, but it's useful for just getting into some tissues that are a little bit harder to access just because you need some better anchor points. Um, so if you feel like you're a bit stiff when you're trying to rotate, or if you're trying to be able to flex forward, then this would be a, a nice stretch for you. With any uh, stretching, um, what's gonna allow you to get more range is having a trade-off of stability somewhere else so that you can create mobility in the area that you're trying to create mobility in. Um, and so if you have a, a lot of reduced contact points on the ground, for example, you're going to have to have some pretty good stability in other areas of your body to make up for that. If we're on all fours, though, we've got four points or potentially six points of stability, right? We've got our toes touching, our knees touching, and our, and our hands touching, right? Now, this is a, a spot where when you're starting to learn how to walk, your rotation begins to get challenged as you start to crawl. So if I'm in this position with my left knee and my right hand off the ground, I have to resist rotation happening at my hip and shoulder. But similarly, if those guys lock down on me, then I have to resist rotation into my upper back. Now, to be able to control an area, you also have to have range in the area. And that's where this, this sort of, I think, thing has maybe gone a bit of a different direction where we talked about uh, motor control and um, trying to work at specific exercise and I think there's a bit of sort of disconnect between what we're trying to achieve and how we get there. Um, if we're trying, like I said before, if we're trying to create some flexibility, we have to create some rigidity somewhere and so that's, that's relevant in movement as well. If our joints have to be mobile, for example, in our very mobile joints of our shoulders and our hips, there has to be some rigidity somewhere. So we need to consider that when we're doing this as we're trying to improve our ability to rotate through our thoracic spine or upper back. Um, most people will know this exercise is like a thread the needle type exercise. It can be an active pulling exercise, an active pushing exercise, or it could be something where you're just trying to increase that rotation, that stretch. The precursor though is having lumbo pelvic stability. So if you don't know what that means, check back and look at our modified Superman exercise or like dead bug exercises or rolling exercises, things that are more on your back and on your tummy. See if those are easy for you. And if they are, then maybe progress into this. You're better off spending your time working on those first, okay? So for the stretch side of it, you need an anchor point. So you need something to be able to leverage off of. You could use a squat rack, you could just something sturdy. I think this kettlebell is about 28 kilo. And even then, it's probably gonna be just on the verge of not quite enough for me, just because it's gonna move around a little bit. But that being said, it's something I can pull on. So instead of being up here on my hands, what I'm gonna do is come down onto my elbows. And I wanna think about being as tall as I can the whole time. Tall being this way, and I wanna be as wide as I can. We're gonna keep the lower back in this sort of neutral-ish position, so not quite flex fully, not quite extended fully, kind of somewhere in between. Again, if you're not sure what that is, go back to those other videos we were talking about. And just to show you from the side, if I come down onto my elbows, I'm then gonna start trying and create this rotation. But I'm not sacrificing this position. I'm not going into flexion in my lower back to get the rotation because then I'm moving in that area, right? I'm not putting the rotation into the area I want it to go into. So I have to fixate an area so I can rotate in the area I want to. I know this probably starts to sound like it's a bit redundant and repetitive, but these principles are super important to get the most out of what you're trying to do. So I'm here, I'm going down, I'm keeping long as I can, as wide as I can, which means my elbows are pushing the ground away from me. So I'm pushing down, knees or whatever is a comfortable width, and I'm gonna reach over to this kettlebell. And what it means I can do is hang off of it. So I'm pulling on the kettlebell and rotating and rotating, and I'm gonna pull myself a little bit further through 
I'll start to look down at the ground to create this counter rotation. So now my pelvis and my head are sort of facing the same direction and my thoracic spine is rotating to the right. And it means that I'm really just rotating through that thoracic spine. If I want to increase, I'm going to pull the kettlebell towards me like an isometric contraction. I'm pulling, I'm pulling, I'm pulling. So I'm pulling like that. And then I'll relax and inch a little bit further into it. And then relax, okay? So nice simple stretch if you've got that prerequisite stability and awareness around that lumbar pelvic region. Like I said, if you don't, go for creating the stability there first and you might find the thoracic spine just opens up anyway. And then once you feel like you wanna get more end range, then I'd move into something like this. Um, but nice exercise for those that are ready for it. If you like this video, then please hit like below. Otherwise, to check out more of our content in the future, you can subscribe to our channel by clicking our logo over here. And to check out our latest video, click up here.